Throughout its history, Super Smash Bros. has offered a myriad of controller options. Starting with the original Super Smash Bros. on Nintendo 64, the only option was the N64 controller. The perhaps overly ambitious 3D grip design of this controller still sparks debates over which grip is optimal. Super Smash Bros. Melee on the GameCube naturally used the GameCube controller, establishing the connection between this gamepad and Smash that remains extremely relevant to this day. Melee took advantage of the GameCube controller's analog triggers to allow variable shielding, known as light shielding. It also made use of the new right stick, the C stick, to perform macro inputs of attack and of direction. Unless you were in single player mode. I mean, what could be more important than camera control, right? The Wii introduced many new ways to play Smash. For Brawl, GameCube controllers were still supported as the control had four inputs for these to match its backwards compatibility. As the other peripherals did not feature analog triggers, the light shielding mechanic was removed for Brawl and every subsequent Smash game. Brawl also supported the Wii Remote and Nunchuck combo, which functions somewhat like a GameCube controller chopped in half. There was even an option to use Wii Remote's motion controllers to perform Smash attacks by flailing your arms. Quite possibly the least used control method in Smash history. For those of the minimalistic nature, Brawl also allowed Wii Remotes to be used on its own in sideways orientation. You could say that this was a precursor to single Joy-Con gameplay, except you didn't even have a stick to move with. Lastly, Brawl could be played with the Classic Controller and Classic Controller Pro. The regular Classic Controller was a little bit awkward since it needed to be attached to a Wii Remote at all times, but the Classic Controller Pro was the first design leading up to Switch Pro controller that we use today. Smash 4 was released on the Nintendo 3DS. This mostly forgotten Smash release only supported the 3DS controls itself as it was literally played on a handheld peripheral, but that didn't stop modders from rigging up the way that they'd play it with GameCube controllers. Smash 4 on the Wii U was accompanied by the release of the USB GameCube controller adapter, showing love to the huge fanbase of Smash players who prefer this classic peripheral. Two new GameCube controller designs were also released. Smash 4 has the most native controller options of any Smash game, supporting the GameCube controller, Wii Remote and Nunchuck, Sideways Wii Remote, Classic Controller and Classic Controller Pro, the Nintendo 3DS as well as a Wii U Pro controller. Despite the overwhelming options on the Wii U, a fresh update of the Switch offers Smash Ultimate something entirely new and unique. Upon the release of Ultimate, a new GameCube controller and adapter design was also released. Even three consoles later, the majority of Smash players still prefer the GameCube controller. Its ergonomic form-fitting design feels as though it was molded to fit right into your hands, and the unique button layout. <coughs> uh, in addition to maintaining the GameCube controller support, Smash Ultimate can also be played with your Joy-Cons, a single sideways Joy-Con, and a new Switch Pro controller, which is also quite attractive. The Wii Remote as well as the Wii U Pro Controller are still supported by the dust in your closet. Ever since Brawl, the Smash game settings offer a robust input remapper, allowing you to set any buttons to do almost anything that you want. This is still limited to only the inputs that Smash uses, however, and sometimes even further. This brings us to Switch version 10.0, the newest console update. Among the usual quality of life features such as transferring data between consoles and SD cards, Nintendo slipped in a new controller mapping setting. For most controllers, this feature allows you to map any button on the controller to any input possible, even allowing the sticks to be switched between the right and left functions. This offers even more customization than the control settings in Smash alone, but what potential does it have for competitive play? Well, before we get into that, here's our question of the day. What's your favorite controller to Smash with? Let us know in the comments down below and stay tuned to find out more about the controls you can do with the remapping. If you're looking to improve, ProGuide.com is the best place to expand your Smash knowledge. We've got tier lists, character guides, and the instant access to coaches with our Play With Pros platform. If that wasn't enough, you can learn from the best via our exclusive pro courses featuring MKLeo, Zero, and much more. You can also join our live classes right here on the Pro Guides YouTube channel. Tune in Monday through Friday at 12 p.m. PST and make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you never miss them. When it comes to remapping, what can we do with this new setting that we can't do with the Smash's game settings? There are two main options that were not possible before. The first is utilizing the L3 and R3 inputs. These are the names given to the inputs from clicking the sticks on the Switch Pro Controller or Joy-Cons. Normally, the R3 and L3 inputs do nothing in Smash and cannot even be reprogrammed. A small exception is a single sideways Joy-Con peripheral which uses the stick click input coupled with the face button to perform taunts, but even that cannot be remapped inside Smash. With the Switch's remap function, the stick clicks can be remapped to any input, which creates some unique implementation into Smash. Most simply, the right stick click can be mapped to A, or whatever you have attack mapped to in-game. This will put an input of neutral A on your right stick click, which can be combined with the left stick click direction, or even a right stick click direction if well timed. We can take advantage of this to unlock C-Stick Smash attacks when set to tilt or vice versa, and C-Stick nares, although not in the traditional sense. 
Smash 4 introduced a useful yet sometimes pesky mechanic of counting the diagonal corner directions of the right stick as a neutral directional input. This allows players to jab and neutral air with the right stick regardless of the left stick direction. The new remap method in Ultimate will still require the left stick to be in neutral position for an air, but it can be done by simply clicking the right stick. This is great for players who use stick jump or shoulder buttons to jump, as you can now leave your right thumb on the C stick for every attack input. This applies smashes and tilts too. Most competitive players change the right stick to tilt attacks within the game settings, as smash attacks are easier to perform than tilts with the left stick and A. By remapping R3 to A, you can now perform smash attacks by clicking the right stick while tapping the left stick in a direction, while still getting tilts with the flick of the right stick. The reverse applies to smash stick. If your right stick is set to smash attacks and R3 map to A, then you can tilt the left stick while clicking the right to input tilts. For a really economical control scheme, you can remap R3 to A and set a shoulder button to jump and another to special. Doing this means that you'll never have to move your thumb or index finger to the face buttons. The R3 mapping doesn't really end here. You can also get some interesting utility by mapping the right stick click to B for your special inputs. Like the previous example, this lets you use your neutral B by clicking the right stick or any special move by combining the left stick direction with the click. This is great for characters who use special moves and don't really want to be far from the C-stick at all times, but it goes even further. With right stick set to tilt attacks, a well-timed R3 click can be aimed to give you any special input with the right stick alone. This means that you can essentially use the right stick for any tilt or any special move without touching any other buttons or sticks. Aside from these benefits, mapping R3 to special can assist with some character-specific techniques. It comes in handy for Shulks using dial storage technique to reduce the landing lag. This technique is quite complex, so we recommend researching it in greater depth. But with the storage active, an example of this application is by clicking the right stick shortly after an aerial to reduce its landing lag. This control option can also be used to perform B reverses with one finger. This can be done by clicking the right stick and immediately tilting backwards. We've been talking a lot about the right stick click or the R3 input, but the left stick or L3 can also be used as well. By mapping L3 to an attack, you can perform several aerials, smash attacks, and tilts with the left stick. This has many benefits. Firstly, it provides another, easier method of inputting smash attacks when the right stick is set to tilt, and it also gives you a directional attack stick in case you have your right stick mapped to specials, or another neat options that we'll cover in just a moment. L3 can be mapped to special so your left stick can function as a movement stick and allow you to perform any special. This makes it so Shulk style storage is more practical and it can be used for B reverses and weight bounces too. There's probably a lot of potential for L3 and R3 remapping, but this feature only just was released. Be sure to let us know in the comments if you've seen anything else achieved with this method. Anyway, we have one more main remapping exploit. The mapping settings gives us the option to change our left stick to register as a right stick. We could do the opposite as well, but we need to have at least one stick for movement, so it's probably best if that's on the left, away from the face buttons. By setting the right stick to left stick, we can now have two movement sticks. Interestingly, the left stick still takes priority, but both sticks can be used in conjunction for general movements such as dash dancing. You can actually get some unique precise dash dancing by holding the right stick in one direction and flicking the left stick backwards within an initial dash. This can also be made easier to angle certain moves like Pikachu's up B or any of the Dancing Blade variants. Setting the right stick to function as the left stick does completely remove your normal right stick functions, but this issue can slightly be mitigated by having click inputs set on one or both sticks. There may be potential for mashing and SDI using these methods as well, but this has yet been fully explored. Mashing by rotating the right stick will be easier for most players than the left stick though. So we've gone over these new methods and their benefits, but what issues arise? The most basic is comfort and difficulty. Clicking sticks is a rather awkward input and can be very difficult to do in conjunction with the direction. This introduces a new input that can be activated by accident as well. Double mapping your left stick is also a big sacrifice, removing your normal right stick functionality. The other issue comes from the legality and inconvenience. Changing the mapping requires the player to access the Switch console menu and changes the settings for the controller on the specific console. Although this can be time consuming, consoles used for tournaments can opt to save for presets for the most common remap schemes in the event that this practice becomes very common. Another issue to take into account when discussing legality is that the remapping option is not possible for the GameCube controller. The Pro Controller already has input advantages by having an additional shoulder button, but the fighting game communities have banned console remapping for similar reasons. At the end of the day, controller mapping creates a few new possibilities with the potential for even more down the line. If done effectively and efficiently, it doesn't take any longer to set up than a regular Smash Control settings, and most TOs are in favor of leaving it legal. So keep your eyes peeled for new discoveries with mapping. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you guys check out ProGuys.com and turn on notifications so you can be the first to check out our newest content. My name is Nathan Ng, and I hope you guys stay safe and stay healthy and have a fantastic day.